Do you really know how to use the cinematic mode on iPhone properly? In this tutorial, we'll go through settings, filming tips, pros and cons of cinematic mode you should know about. I'll show you editing by using keyframes directly in native camera app and color grading. We've got lots to do. Ahoy, this is Denka. If you are into photography and filmmaking, consider subscribing. If you never wandered into camera settings, it's probably a good idea to do it now so you get the most out of your phone. I am going to go to the settings. Let's select record video. Enhanced stabilization I have on. The video will zoom in slightly, but you will get that smooth stabilization in cinematic mode. As you are filming, you will not see the final stabilization, so it is going to be a bit shaky. Once you play the recorded video, then you will see the enhanced stabilization. I have auto FPS off. If it was on, it would automatically reduce frame rate to improve low light video and to optimize file size. I don't want that. Let's go back to camera settings and select record cinematic. Here I have default selected as 4K at 24 frames per second. If I go back, I have also record stereo sound enabled. Under preserve settings, I have pretty much everything enabled. This means that every time I'm going to close the camera app, it's not going to go back to default, but it will stay on the settings I used the last time. Those are the main settings. Let's open up the native camera app and select cinematic mode. Here I have a 24 frames per second rate selected in 4K resolution. I always want the best quality possible. You can see that you can film with standard or telephoto and selfie cameras. You're not going to get an ultra wide angle lens in this mode. Before we get to the F, which is aperture settings, let's talk about the exposure. When you tap on the screen, you can lock focus, but you cannot lock exposure. You can do it with the help of an exposure slider. Smartphones expose the overall picture. That's why it is a bit bright. For me, it's a little bit too bright. Every photographer will tell you that we expose highlights. You're not going to end up with blown highlights and you will have an easier time once you start color grading. Most of the time my setting is at minus seven. Sometimes I even push it to minus one. Once you set it, you can just keep filming. It's not, however, truly locked exposure. I could clearly see it when I was filming this video in Bob Cajun. It's not locked, so there are some limitations. You can see how it's going bright and dark, bright and dark. Some shots are simply not possible in this mode. Keep that in mind. Now let's talk about the f-stop. It's aperture. It's digital. It's not optical. It goes from 2.0 to f16. The lower the number, the more softer look you are going to get around the edges of the selected object. The higher the number, the less the bokeh, softness in the background you are going to get. More of the area will be sharp. Sometimes it's too much and the edges end up looking not the best. That white dot will tell you the best option for the particular shot. I'm totally okay filming in higher aperture values and if you want to lower it, you still can once you already filmed it. How do you film? It's all about the focus. You can leave it as it is for scenes where you want the camera to change focus on its own. Another option would be selecting autofocus lock. Just tap on the screen to see this yellow square. If you press and hold, the focus will lock. If the camera sees a face, you will see this tracking indicator. If you are filming multiple people and want constant focus on one person, you can lock the focus by tapping on the screen. It is better to select the focus when you are already filming. Again, I wanted to test the limitations, so I let it to select the focus on its own in this clip. When I tried to select focus after I filmed it, it was not working the best. It just didn't really want to select the focus properly. Then, once I filmed and I selected focus here and there, guided the camera, then once I was editing further the clip, it was already a lot more precise. How do you edit after you filmed a clip? Here is a random clip I filmed in cinematic mode. Once you hit edit, you manipulate the clip further, either in vertical or horizontal mode. 
I prefer horizontal so I can see it better. You can enlarge the video with this icon and then with your fingers, you can make it smaller or bigger. First of all, you can shorten the clips by dragging the sides. You can increase the aperture by hitting the F icon at the top. When you are dragging the white plate head and you hold, you will see that you will automatically zoom in the timeline. So you have precise look where you want to place a play hat. This will pull out the slide on the right. When you see the dot, that is suggested aperture by software. You can however decide what looks the best for you. I'm going to leave it on f2.0. On the left side, from the f-stop icon, you see this square with a dot, which is manual tracking. When you tap on the screen, you can select focus. Yellow dot on the timeline is a keyframe. This means that no matter what the movement is, the focus is on that area. If you don't like what you created, you can delete the keyframes by tapping on the yellow dot. You will see a trash icon, hit that to delete. You can also select an object and create a focus tracking. If you tap again, you will lock the tracking. You will see another yellow dot created. You can create focus pull this way. What's that? Let's tap on this object to focus. I'm going to play a bit of a clip and then tap here. Now this object is in focus and another keyframe has been created. Now when you play back, you can see how it's going to go from one object to the next. This is called focus pull. You can create as many keyframes as you like. Once you are finished with the changes, hit done. If you change your mind after this, you can go back to edit and select revert to get it back to the original way it was filmed. Some of you would already grab the footage, opened up video editor and imported it all there and started editing and color grading. But what if you want just one or two clips, color grade, and you don't want to go to any other app. Let's hit the edit video again. I'm going to hit the second icon at the top. Here I could just hit the outer icon and the phone would automatically enhance the footage for me, but I don't want that. I want to create my own look. I could also hit one of the filters as a starting point, select the strength you want and then adjust it further. I don't want that. Let's do everything from scratch and share my thinking process. So first I'm going to check if my brightness, my exposure is correct and you can lower it, you can make it brighter here. I'm actually going to keep it as it is because I feel that it was exposed just well. Next thing I'm going to look at is highlights. In this case, highlights are pretty good. Sometimes I tone them down a little bit, but maybe I'll do just like, mm. I'm gonna do very, very, very little. So maybe minus nine but it's just personal preference. Next setting is shadows. You can bring those shadows up or you can bring them down. Now I like a little bit more dramatic look, so I'm actually going to bring them a little bit down to about minus 25. Next is contrast. I feel that the photo has already enough contrast. I don't need to do anything else. I could try, but no, I'm just gonna leave it at zero. I'm happy with the contrast. Brightness. The photo is exposed properly. That means it's not too bright or too dark. I'm gonna leave it. Black point. You can take the blacks a little bit out to make it kind of washed out or you can bring them in. I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Saturation. Um, the photo is already colorful enough. So I'm gonna leave it. Saturation is something which also affects skin tones. So if you have a person standing there and you're gonna crank it up, the skin is going to get a lot more orange. Um, if you have a person in a shot, it's actually better to use the one control below, which is vibrance. Vibrance will just take the mid-tones of the image and it will save 
the skin. It's not going to go that orange. So if you want to boost it up, make it more colorful, use vibrance. If you don't have any people in the shot, you can use saturation. Saturation will make all the colors pop. Warmth. The photo is quite warm, but I think that I'm going to make it a tiny bit warmer in this case. Tint. Tint is going to change the tone. So you're going to go to reds or you can go to greens. I'm going to go a little bit higher, about 20. Sharpness. I'm not going to touch that. The photo is already sharp enough. Definition. Again, I don't want to create more of a definition. It's already sharp enough. Noise reduction, the clip was filmed in a very good lighting condition, so there's no noise in the shot. And vignette, that will give you kind of old looking cinematic style photos, so I can add that just a tiny bit, the darker frame, and that will be pretty much it for this particular look. Once you're done editing, you will hit done, you will save it and you're finished. Or if you have simple clips to this one and want to have the same look, you can hit the three dots at the right, copy edit, go to the next clip, hit edit, and those three dots again, and select paste edits. Now you have the same look as in the previous clip. I hope this video helped you understand cinematic mode a little bit better. Give it a thumbs up if it did. And don't forget to subscribe for more. Say hello, leave a comment, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ahoy.